Hello and welcome to lecture 45. We are discussing design of low speed counter rotating fan. So, this is what configuration we have decided for our design problem. Now, here in this case, we have selected this counter rotating fan that is what is having aspect ratio of 3. That is what is little different from what conventional design what we are expecting. So, if you recall, this is what will give you idea say for low speed axial flow compressor, we have taken our aspect ratio of 1. Here we are considering our aspect ratio of 3. Now, this is what all we have discussed in sense of our hint for solving the problem. So, what we realize we will be calculating our mean diameter for rotor 1, then all parameters that will be calculated at mid station based on our design concept or design fundamentals, we will be opting that for say different stations for those blade. Now, for rotor 2 as we have discussed say for conventional stage what absolute flow or absolute velocity coming out from the rotor that is what we are assuming to be going to the stator. So, in line to that here we are making our assumption the velocity with which my flow that will be coming out from rotor 1 that is what is say absolute velocity that is what will be entering inside my rotor 2. Okay. So, we can say our velocity C2 and velocity C3 they both are same. In other sense, we can say my absolute flow angle alpha 2 and alpha 3 that will be same. Then based on this assumption, we will be doing our calculation at the mid station. Once we are having the calculation at the mid station, we can do our calculation at different locations along the span and we can make our blade ready. And that is how we will be moving with say design of this counter rotating fan. Now, very first thing let us take with say my rotor 1 design. Now, if you recall in order to have this rotor 1 design, we need to have some velocity components that need to be known to me. So, if you recall our general guideline or basic guideline what we have discussed for the design of axial flow compressor, it says maybe mass flow rate or we can say my flow coefficient or say my diameters if that is what is known to me, I can move with the calculation of say initial parameters. For this design, if you look at what we know is mass flow rate that is what is known to me, my tip diameter also is known to me and rotational speed for both the rotors for design we have taken 2400 rpm. So, that is what is making our calculation little easy and since of say assumptions. If you recall, we have designed our low speed axial flow compressor where we have assumed our say CA by U tip to be say some number. So, here in this case, it is not the case because we know our mass flow rate. So, let us move with the calculation. What we know? Say we know our tip diameter is 0 0.405 meter okay? and our aspect ratio that is what is given it is 3 even cord for these blades they are given it is say 45 mm. So, we can say this is cord it is say 0 0.045 meter. If that is what is known to me say my aspect ratio we can define as a height to cord ratio you can see this is my height to cord ratio. Now, this height we can write down that is nothing but my tip diameter minus half diameter divided by say my 2 c. Okay. Since I know what is my aspect ratio, we can do calculation for half diameter. And here in this case, if you look at my half diameter, that is what is coming 0.135 meter. So, you can understand if you are known, not known with the aspect ratio, you can assume your radius ratio. By that way also, you can do your calculation. Okay. So, initial guess, if it is known to you, better you go with that part with the known parameters, if not then make suitable assumptions okay? and accordingly we need to move forward with. 
Now once my half diameter and tip diameter they are known to us, we can do the calculation for the inlet area. You can say it is nothing but pi by 4 my tip square minus hub square. Okay, and that's what is giving me my area to be 0 0.114 meter square. So this is what is the area in which my air that's what is going inside. Now this area you can understand we know our basic continuity equation it says by mass flow rate we can write down as a density into area into axial velocity. Basically, we are looking for our velocity component, we are looking for axial velocity. So, this axial velocity we can write down that is nothing but m dot by density into area. Let us make the assumption say density we can assume safely for our atmospheric condition as 1.18 kg per meter cube. If you are putting mass flow rate that is what is given to us it is 6 kg per second. So, 6 divided by this that is what is giving me my axial velocity to be 44.4 meter per second. Now this is what is my axial velocity that is what is known to me. Here in this case like there is always confusion with total property and static property. Say we are considering our static temperature that is what is given that is 298 Kelvin. So just careful if this is what is specifically been mentioned as a static temperature then it is better you do calculation for say total property and that is what we have done here say thermometer that is what is giving me my atmospheric temperature to be say 298 Kelvin that is what is nothing but my static temperature. So we can calculate our total temperature as say T1 plus Ca square by 2 Cp because we can assume or we have our entry of the flow that is what is axial. And that is the reason my CA and C1 they both are same. So if you are putting this as a number it says my total entry temperature that is what is 299 Kelvin. So now we can say we know what is our axial velocity what is our temperature. Now my next parameter for making my velocity triangle that is what is say my peripheral speed. And as we know we are doing our calculation at the mid station. That is the reason why mean diameter we can calculate as a d tip plus say diameter of hub divided by 2 that is what is giving me my mid station as say 0.27. This is what is say my 0.27 meter that is what is my diameter at the mid section. Okay. Now once this is what is known to us we can do calculation for our say peripheral speed. So this peripheral speed we are writing for rotor 1 it is say pi d n by 60 since my rotational speed for rotor 1 it is giving 2400 rpm. So that is why if we are putting that it says my peripheral speed it is coming 33.93 meter per second. So this way you can do your calculation for say C a as well as u and as we discussed maybe if C a by u tip that is what is given to you that will make your life easy you can go with the calculation straight way. So purposefully this data that is what has been given so that you will get the idea how to do calculation if those parameters are not known and few parameters which are required that is what is known to you. Okay. Now if we say my outlet pressure so what we have assumed say we are expecting our total pressure by rotor 1 that is what is say 1200 Pascal. So we can say my total pressure at the mid station that is what is say P01 plus delta P0. So this is what will be my total pressure at the outlet. Now once my total pressure at the outlet that is what is known to us we can do our calculation for the pressure ratio for my rotor 1 it says it is P02 by P01 and if we are putting that number it says it is coming 1.011 that is what is my pressure ratio of rotor 1. Okay. Since my pressure ratio is known to me we want we are looking for something say you can understand say if we are looking for say inlet velocity triangle we are looking for say three different velocities one it is say peripheral speed we are looking for absolute velocity or axial velocity and we can calculate what will be our relative velocity. 
Now in line to that, suppose say if it is having whirl, you can do calculation for CW1. But since our entry, it is given axial entry, so my CW1, that is what is 0. But in order to plot my exit velocity triangle, I need to have one of the parameter or the angle that is what need to be known to me. Okay? So, we are moving towards that. What it says, we can say our isentropic temperature rise, that is what we can calculate here by using say T01, what is my pressure ratio and efficiency. It says efficiency that is for, for two rotors they are given 85 percent. So, we can say this is what is 85, that is what say my delta T0 in rotor 1, it is 1.18 Kelvin. Be careful what design we are discussing at this moment, that is what it says subsonic design or low speed design. So, this range of temperature that will be coming in a lower side. Now, as we have discussed, now suppose if I consider this is what is say my relative or my velocity triangle at the entry of my rotor 1, since this is what is say axial entry, we can write down my 10 beta at mid station, it is u by C A, u we have calculated it is 33.93 and C A also we have calculated it is 44.4. .4. So, they are the known parameters here. Okay. If that is what is your case, we can calculate what will be my say air angle or relative flow angle at the entry of my rotor 1, say this is what is my beta 1. Okay. Now, we will compare our aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work, you must understand like we are looking for calculation for say what is the outlet condition. So, if you are putting that, it says this is what is my work done factor into UCA 10 beta 1 minus 10 beta 2, that is nothing but my aerodynamic work and this is what is my thermodynamic work, it say Cp delta T0. So, this is what we have calculated. And based on that, we can calculate what will be my beta 2. So, here if you look at my beta 2, that is what is coming minus 2.44. Okay. So, this is what we are calculating at the outlet condition. Now, what we know, this is what we can say by using this, we can calculate what will be my CW2 because we are looking for all other angles and parameters need to be calculated. So, my CW2 that is what we can calculate by using u minus C A 10 beta 2. Okay. If this is what is your case, my whirl component at the mid station at the outlet, it is coming 35.82 meter per second. Okay. Now, here in this case, what angle we are getting that need to be very careful about. So, you can see this is what is a modification of our angle. So, we can say my velocity triangle that is what will be changing at the mid station like this, be careful. Okay. So, we need to be very careful when we are doing our calculation. So, this is what say minus 2.44, this is what is say this angle and this is what will be my CW2. So, if you compare my CW2 that is what is coming to be larger than that of my peripheral speed u. Okay. And if you look at my angle alpha 2 that is what is with my axial direction we are calculating with. Okay. So, be careful when you are doing your calculation, make your velocity triangle accordingly. Now, once we have calculated our beta 1 and beta 2, we can do our calculation for say blade deflection angle that is nothing but my delta beta. So, if we are putting that delta beta, it is coming 39.83 degree. Okay. Now, say for this design, it is given my power or say motor that is what is available that is having power capacity of 15 kilowatt. So, in order to check whether this motor is sufficient or not, that also can be verified when you are doing your calculation using this program. Okay. Now, here in this case, we can write down my power that is what is given by MCP delta T0 by mechanical efficiency and this is what is my compressor efficiency. Be careful what we are doing at this moment, say we are assuming our mechanical efficiency to be 75 percent, which may not be the case when we are talking about the actual engine. 
this may be in the range of 0.85 or 90 percent we have discussed this point so if you are putting this as a case it says my power that's what is coming say 11.21 kilowatt okay so this is how we are doing our calculation for power remember this power calculation that's what is at the mid station okay now once this all parameters are known to us we can do calculation for say different velocity components so if you are considering say inlet velocity triangle my relative velocity at the entry of my rotor that can be calculated based on say sine component so that's what is given by say u by sine beta and that gives me my relative velocity at the entry as 55.85 meter per second okay same way based on my outlet velocity triangle we can do our calculation for relative velocity at the outlet and this is what is the formulation for that it says my outlet velocity it is coming 44.44 meter per second okay same way we can do our calculation for absolute velocity because this is what is my requirement for what is going inside my rotor 2 okay so this we can write down it is ca by say cos alpha 2 and that's what is coming 57.05 meter per second okay so this is how we are doing calculation for different velocity components now once this is what has been calculated we will check with the holler's factor it says that is nothing but the ratio of relative velocity so we can say v2 by v1 and that's what is coming 0.79 so this is what is showing our d holler's factor so one of the parameter for checking that's what we are considering is a d holler's factor okay remember one thing this d holler's factor that's what is applicable for the stage and that too it's a state rotor stator combination or say stator rotor combination but still we will be checking in order to get the idea what we are claiming in sense of what we are getting for relative velocity at the entry of the rotor 2 we will see this part now once this is what has been calculated a target is to calculate the diffusion factor and in order to do the calculation for the diffusion factor we are looking for say parameter that's what is called m factor so carter's rule that's what it says my slope factor that can be calculated based on what we say my maximum camber okay and this is what is giving me my say m factor as say 0.41 at the mid station now pitch that's what we are writing as a 2 pi r by z now the question here it is the selection of number of blades okay since we are planning to compare our design with the earlier design for say different pressure rise and that's the reason why we are assuming same number of blades it says for rotor 1 i am assuming here number of blades to be 19 you know better we are doing our pen paper calculation at this moment later on based on this calculation we will be making our excel sheet program and in that excel sheet program you can play with this number okay for say sake of brevity we will be taking same number of blades say 19 number of blades it says this is what is giving me pitch as a 0 0.044 okay we can calculate our solidity it is nothing but core to pitch ratio it is coming 1.00 now once my solidity at the mid station it is known we can calculate our diffusion factor based on the formula for say beta 1 and beta 2 so if this is what is your case diffusion factor is coming 0.52 at the mid station we are presently discussing for say rotor 1 now we are more interested in calculating what all will be our angles say camber angle my deviation angle and stagger angle so let's put we know based on our equation this is what is given by delta beta minus incidence divided by this formula what we realize at mid station as we have discussed earlier we are assuming our incidence angle to be zero same way at the hub when we will be doing calculation we know we are assuming our incidence angle to be positive 
and at the tip we are assuming our incidence angle to be negative. So, here we are taking this to be say 0, it says my camber angle that is what is coming 67.87. Okay. Based on this camber angle we can do calculation what will be my say deviation angle. So, this deviation angle is nothing but m theta by root sigma. If you are doing that calculation, my deviation angle is coming 28.05 degree. Okay. Once these two parameters are known to us, we can do calculation for say our stagger angle and that stagger angle is coming say 3.45. Okay. So, this is what all we are doing calculation at the mid station. Let us see. So, we can say this is what is my Excel sheet program or my parameters that is what is representing. Here in this case, if you are looking at, we are assuming pressure rise by my rotor 1 as say 1200 Pascal. Okay. This is what is say, we are considering as a 1200 Pascal and based on that, these all are the parameters which are calculated. You can say we are having a diffusion factor 0.52, our d hollers factor 0.80 and our camber angle that is what it says 67.88. Now, once this station at, at this particular station we have done our calculation, we will be targeting what all need to be checked for say my half station and at my tip station. So, let us move towards that. So, what we realize say when we are talking about the fundamental design approach, we know we are having great control in sense of putting the aerodynamic loading to my rotor. Okay. We can think of tip loaded rotor, we can think of hub loaded rotor, we can think of mid loaded rotor. So, for present case, we will be considering say tip loaded rotor. Okay. So, when we say it is a tip loaded rotor, now I need to assume or I need to select the total pressure that is what is expected or total pressure rise expected at the hub, my total pressure that is what is expected at the tip and do not forget we will be doing this total pressure calculation at the outlet as average total pressure. Okay. So, let us see say let us assume at hub we are assuming our pressure rise to be 500 Pascal and at the tip we are considering that to be say 1900 Pascal. It is your choice. Okay. We will see how these numbers they are coming. Say initial calculation with iterations, we have assumed this number say 500 Pascal and 1900 Pascal. Okay. So, if I am putting say 1900 Pascal or say if we are putting at the hub say 500 Pascal. I need to do my calculation at the hub station. Same way for 1900 Pascal also, I need to do my calculation at the tip station. Okay. So, let us see what all we are calculating. What we know? My hub that is what is entry is axial 1. So, I say my alpha 1 at hub it is 0. At hub I can calculate what will be my peripheral speed. Okay. So, this peripheral speed it is coming 19.69 meter per second. We can do our calculation for beta 1 at the hub. So, you can see here this is what is coming say 20.91. So, in line to what all calculation we have done at the mid station, this calculation need to be done at both hub as well as tip. Okay. I can say you do this calculation, but you know it is better to explain so that that will build the confidence in you how exactly this calculation need to be done. Okay? And after building this confidence you can go further and that is the reason why we are doing all our calculation at the hub as well as at the tip. So, what it says at the hub we are expecting our pressure rise to be 500 Pascal. So, that is what will be giving me my pressure ratio at the hub to be 1.005. Okay, be careful, my pressure ratio at all station that is what is different. Okay. We have done earlier calculation that is what is at mid station. Here in this case, I can do my calculation for say temperature rise at the hub. So, I will be putting P01 at the hub and delta P0 
and this temperature that's what is we can say it is 299k okay and that's what is giving me my delta t0 as 0 0.49 okay now once we have calculated that part we can do our calculation based on say our comparison say aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work that's what we are comparing here and based on this comparison we can do our calculation for say outlet blade angle okay or my air angle that's what is or relative flow angle beta 2 we are calculating now once this is what is known to us we can calculate what will be my delta beta just look at my delta beta is coming 37.18 degree same way we can do our calculation as i told i we need to do calculation for the power requirement at that station also so this is what is the calculation for the specific energy now we can do our calculation for beta 2 that's what is my outlet angle we can do our calculation for the wall component that's what is coming 29.93 meter per second and my alpha at the hub that's what is coming or alpha 2 at the hub it is coming 33.93 we can do our calculation for relative velocities and relative velocity ratios so when we are taking this relative velocity ratios at the hub it is coming 0.97 just look at okay i'm sure you are able to do this calculation so i'm going little fast in sense of showing the calculation this slides will be with you maybe you can verify you can check also here in this case we can do our calculation for the pitch be careful this is what is for the representation purpose only you can understand at the hub my radius will be smaller and that's the reason my pitch will be coming to be smaller at the tip my radius is higher for same number of blades my pitch will be coming to be on the higher side so if we are putting here it says my pitch is coming 0 0.022 meter okay now based on this we can do our calculation for the solidity at the hub it is coming 2.016 okay we can also calculate what will be my diffusion factor so the diffusion factor based on beta 1 and beta 2 it is coming 0.18 okay so my power requirement at the hub station as we have discussed that's what is a function of delta t0 at particular station and if you are taking mechanical efficiency 75 percent and say by compressor efficiency 85 percent it says this is what is coming 4.68 kilowatt okay we can do our calculation for say m factor since here be careful we are talking about beta 2 at the hub and that m factor is coming 0.44 we can do our calculation for say camber angle at the hub we can do our calculation for say deviation angle at the hub and we can do our calculation for the say stagger angle at the hub it says this is camber angle is coming 51.12 degree my deviation angle it is coming 15.93 and my stagger angle that's what is coming minus 6.65 okay now in line to that as we have discussed we can do our calculation at the tip station also okay so this is what we will be discussing in next lecture so for today if you realize what we have done we have done our calculation at the mid station for router 1 and based on that calculation we have calculated all parameters which are required for understanding of design and we have started calculating other parameters at the hub station so in next session we will be discussing about the calculation at the tip station then we will see how we will be setting with these numbers and why do we need to set these numbers then after we will be starting with the design of say rotor 2 so be with me thank you thank you very much for your kind attention